on need, irrespective of race, religion, gender, or political affiliation. MSF relies mainly on the generosity of individual donors, with over 90% of MSF's income coming from private donors giving small amounts. So please, this is definitely a worthy cause. And with that, I am so happy to say that it's time for the fastest mascot around as we try to keep up with Joey and his run of Sonic the Hedgehog CD. What's up, everyone? I'm Joey Baby. I'm here with my beautiful commentators, Zandre69, Guy2308. How are you, my friends? Very good. Yep, doing Very well. Very excited. Very excited as well. Yeah, we got the... Yeah, we got the... Like the best CD 93 runners in this group right now. I got the fells. I got the boys here. Um, in the world. So, yeah, in the world. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, this this was originally in this uh, Sonic block, but um, you know, this is this is a game about time traveling. So I stumbled across a future signpost. One thing led to another, and I got my schedule, uh, my run to a Friday morning. You know, whoops. Uh, how can I make that blunder? But yeah, um, I'm gonna get the run going. So we are going to start off in five, four, three, two, one, go. All right. So starting off in the first level, Palm Tree Panic. Well, first off, there's three zones in each world, or acts, if you will. Um, and most Sonic games usually have two, but most of the early games all have three. But uh, there's two main levels, and then there's one boss zone in each world. And as you see, uh, or as you saw at the start of the level, Joey's using not a spin dash, but this thing called a super peel out, which is actually the faster movement option in this game, as it takes less time to charge up um, than a spin dash in this game, which works a little differently. But there's some good spots to use spin dashes instead of peel outs as you yeah. are you know rolling and stuff but yeah they're, they're... yeah peel out has way more speed over the spin dash yep and, and yeah. in the any percent category there's only like two spots that use the spin dash one of them being um like right before the monitor and title one when you uh time travel to the bad future, and then the second one being in Stardust 3, right before the Metal Sonic race. Because I think it gives you a slight boost in speed, although I think it's just placebo, but I like doing it there, so. I, I partially thought that it was because the the door opening up, you have a smaller hitbox going under it, but I, I could be wrong. Yeah, I think that's yeah, maybe. a... Maybe. So you yeah. get like, kind of release your spin dash faster than you can release peel up. Yeah, and coming up on the first boss here, uh, a, a common theme about these games' bosses is that, you know, usually in the other classic Sonic games, they'd take, you know, eight hits to kill, but as you saw there, he just made cake of this boss fight. Um, usually most taking one to three hits or, or just straight up auto scrollers. Yep. Yeah, so that section there, um, there's an audio cue I listen to, to uh, and a visual, of course, yeah. to have a decent timing on when to release the peel out there, because the screen uh, shifts over after Robotnik goes far enough, and you can bunk the right boundary at the right time, so you just, you're just you just just directly under the hole, so you don't have to do any adjustments, so yeah. it's much faster doing so. Yep. And right here, Joey is doing the very first level wrap of the game, and it's quite convenient to set up if you know how to do it, but uh, yeah, there's a slight chance that you can get sub-pixeled and the level wrap won't work, but fortunately, Joey got it, so first try. Yeah, this is like 17 flat. This is like the first and only level wrap in this round. I mean, there's other level wraps that exist in the game, but most are inconsistent or are not effective. Yeah. Like, the, I think yeah, there's- Yeah, the level wrap triggers. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, the level wrap triggers because um, you go so fast to the left boundary that, that your X coordinates hits the negative and the game translates that to a high positive number. So you pretty much skip uh, playing the whole stage like that. Yeah. And this is a precise slope jump go. right here. Yep. 
That negative uh, X coordinate being like converted into like the highest X positive coordinate possible as a thing for all classic Sonic games. That was close. You almost time traveled there. Time traveling there would actually be really bad as the... Yeah, it's not beneficial at all. The past the layout. I mean, we can explain this. Like every level layout, um, like past, future, present, future. We're in the present right now. Every level starts in the present except for zone three. Um, but there's past, present, bad feature, good feature, and some of the layouts are better than others for some levels, but past layout for Collision 2 is terrible. <laughs> yeah, it's very bad. Like, and also, too, when you time travel, you lose your speed shoes completely, which isn't, like, really too much of a surprise, but yeah. Yeah, that's also really bad. Also, really good one jump there. Skipping that boss entirely. Um, there's a pretty, like... Yeah precise jump at the start there where you could just jump past the ceiling and land immediately on the little uh, flower capsule or whatever. Yep. Title 1, we're also going to go above the level here just to skip this first little underwater section with some precise stomps on these uh, dragonflies or whatever. Pretty cool, but right here we're kind of forced to time travel. Which is actually good because the bad future layout here is pretty fast. And we're coming up on a spin dash here, like Zandre mentioned before. Yep, right there is where the first spin dash is done. And then you yeah. won't see it again. <laughs> it's. I think it's just done because you can't roll immediately out of a peel out fast enough to break that monitor. So it's just convenient to spin dash there. Yeah. So this is funny uh, timing. Uh, housing just came into my building working on something, so you, I mean, you guys gonna have to cover commentary for a good amount. All right, sounds good. No worries. I mean, we're yeah, commentators for fun. a reason. <laughs> yep. This is basically cool. our job. Cool. So. We got you. Yeah, of course. Thank you for a bro. But yeah, uh, you're welcome. Title two. Uh, this this level's great because it's just a bunch of really nice movement. Some underwater, some above water. Um, and a great uh, part of this game is just the movement. It can be really fluid and solid through and through, so... Um, we also t uh, time travel to the past uh, later on in this level. And it's pretty good because um, there's a part where you can... There's like this uh, gate at the end of the level in the future. Or no, not the future, the present layout that's not there in the past. So that's kind of cool. I don't think you'll get the time travel here, though. He might. Oh, yeah, it, you can delay it by getting yeah, on yeah. I had to use the, the rings there. I got caught up by the water shooters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as we get it, it's all good. So I can show off the little zip here, at least. Yeah, but as you see, there's no gate there. And you can just do this little zip to the end of the level, and it's really fast and clean and awesome. Hey, yo. So. Yeah, the part... <laughs> Yeah, the part right before where you time travel, that part is very tough, like, trying to avoid all the uh, the blue fireballs and um, trying to time travel fast at the same time, so yeah. Yeah, there's, it's like, it, it goes on a cycle, so if you don't mess up the movement before, it's really easy to know what cycle you're on, but it, it, he messed up the movement. Uh, okay. But this is a really cool boss kill right here, yeah. Yeah, let's let Bank Joey focus here because it is really tight and yeah, audio cues. Yep. Really, nice. Really clean, really nice. Yeah, that's really more precise uh, than it looks right there. It, it looked really easy there, but there's actually a lot you need to look out for on that kill. And glad I got that one. <laughs> yeah. And if you don't get that, <laughs> it's just basically a long waiting session of him bobbing down and you jumping at his bubbles relentlessly and trying to kill him as fast as possible, but it usually is a reset if you don't yeah. get that. It's one of the biggest parts of the run that I was the most worried about uh, trying to get, so I'm glad that worked out. Yeah, it yeah. balances. So this, so, yeah. so this stage, um, you don't want to be in the time, like you don't want to time travel at all, so I'm gonna ex exclusively try to get rid of it as I'm going through this stage. Yeah, if you if you uh, are flashing for a while and then immediately halt your speed, then you will not time travel. But Quartz Quadrant is a level where you are basically doing time travel controlling because the present layout is the best. 
and it's just really good movement overall, I feel. Yeah, this is definitely, like, one of the more satisfying levels, like, especially that beginning, getting, like, that two-frame window pause just right, so you just fly through. Yeah, that's really great. Come on. And also getting this jump here, so you just fly through that part, and then immediately cancel that pass time travel, and then these speed shoes to go through this lower route of the level. I feel like a lot of those levels in CD are very vertically oriented, uh, so there's a lot of different routes to go by, which is very awesome, because uh, you could just do a route that's way faster, like that bottom route would be way faster than going through the top, which probably has a lot of mazes and messes. Yeah, just a lot of yeah. slowdowns and whatnot, and you have to account for falling down, and that's not very fun. Yeah. There's not a lot of bottomless pits in this game. I think the only bottomless pit is in the last level. Yep. I'm not mistaken. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about that later once it comes up about like what's really neat about that pit in this version of the game compared to the 11. Yeah, but on these uh, little treadmills here, there, there was a jump earlier that he missed that you could just fly through this whole beginning part, but he got the solid Yeah, it saves like up. two to three seconds. Um, so this is pretty much run right the, the boss fight, so if you have donations, this is the time. We definitely have some donations. We have $50 from Jesse Lockhart who says, gotta go fast with those donation incentives and gotta donate for that Samus helmet. My hero heart. And we have $10 from PDRS90, oh sorry, PDRS96 who says, couldn't donate during the Sonic block earlier on, but I've managed to donate during Sonic CD. Good luck, Joey Baby, on the run. Also, shout out to the Marvel Zone with the screaming hedgehog inside. And we have $15 from Dr. S, who just says, gotta go fast. You gotta go fast. True. All right, so next up, we have a really hard level, just filled with uh, really fast platforming. Um, the hard part about this level is that if you fall down, you're gonna bounce a lot, so. Doing our best to just avoid that is uh, the play here. So I'm just gonna let Joey focus and just enjoy this wonderful gameplay. Very great. And I haven't mentioned this before, but... That's a gold for me, too. Awesome, yeah. Yeah, good job, Joey. Take that. Very clean. But we haven't mentioned this yet, but he's doing a trick to go through walls. You know, you might be wondering, oh, how is he going through walls? But if you um, start a peel out and then pause, and then it's like a down right input, and then pause again, and then hold up, um, you'll do what's called a moving peel out. And you'll just basically, you'll be able to go through walls and stuff. And it's actually really useful and seen a lot through this run as you've seen so far. And it's it's just, an, it adds another element of the really fun movement in this game because you can just kind of go through things. And just skip parts that you don't want to play. Yeah, it, it's like very versatile. It's not like the most broken thing, but there's definitely like, what do you call it, uses for it that make it like much more faster than doing it like otherwise so yeah yeah and if this level is just a great example of how you use moving kill outs to just go through walls and start zipping and yeah you got that really nice skip zip. <laughs> yeah that that little wall zip at the end is pretty much sub pixels sometimes you don't zip inside the second wall off screen and i got it that time which is really good yeah very nice and uh, break this shield monitor here. And we're coming up on another boss, and what do you know, it's another little auto-scroller where you just jump at the doctor and then platforms fall. Yeah. I think it's... Yeah, this, this could be another yeah, yeah. donation section here. Perfect. We have $10 from Hallie Cat who says, Hi, Charbunny, keep up the awesome work. All oh, thanks. And good luck to Joey and the rest of today's runners. We have $25 from Bruno Fightmaster, who says more SGDQ is required, providing donation for additional bonus games. 
And we have $25 from Legendary Gentleman who says, gotta donate for the bonus game five, my my finale to give everyone more time to get in those donations as we push that number higher and higher. Gamers unite. And please, again, do consider donating toward that bonus game. We have a long way to go. And as we can chip things off now, if we can make some progress now, it's really gonna help us out. So thanks for anything you can spare for charity. Awesome. So yeah, that was Wacky 3. There's actually little time saves in that level that you can do, um, especially at the end there where you see those blocks that came up. Those can continue bouncing if you hit um, Dr. Botnik, like, I don't know, with like the first few frames that you can. I feel like that's like a two frame window, but I am not exactly sure, but it is very tight and not something you should usually go for in single segment. But uh, yeah, this is also another really interesting level where um, you spend a bit of time in the present for Starless One, then you go into the past because there's less BS going on for the past layout, but it still has its caveats, but... Joey is going on his own route here, and it's not looking too good, so that just speaks volumes about how bad this level is. And, uh, regardless of that, he's still doing fine, though. He got, like, a 27. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, the little section where you, uh, you're pretty much just rolling through, three things could happen. You can either, uh, not roll over the monitor and you just stop right in front of it. You miss the red spring or you touch the future signpost. So I got past the first two hurdles by touch the future, which I do not want. So uh, I had to slow down intentionally just so I don't accidentally go to a different time period. Yeah. And there's also a chance at the end of the level where you can just like not um, go fast. <laughs> the game just stops you in your tracks, which is annoying. And also, you're supposed to go to the bottom right there, but um, there's yeah, funny sub pixel yeah, there's moment. Sub pixels that can prevent you from doing so, and it's kind of annoying. But yeah, I feel like Stardust Speedway. A lot of these levels, um, they can really catch you off guard and just make you lose a bunch of time. Like as you see here. Right, Stardust three coming up. Another yeah. auto scroller, I feel. I mean, you're you're running, you know, Metal Sonic race, iconic. So I, I wouldn't really call it an auto scroller, but yeah, like you can control how fast the stage is. But oh, nice monitor. So like, I brought this up. I, I don't know if I brought it up. I'll bring it up now. Like rolling in this game is really inconsistent. Even though you're clearly rolling to a monitor, sometimes due to sub pixels, you don't break it. You just bonk right in front of it and you don't go anywhere. It's really annoying. Yeah, especially on those monitors, there's three in a row there. So there's three, um, you know, chances that you'll be stopped there. It's pretty annoying. Yeah. This stage is, it's of course kind of a hold right, but there's obstacles that you have to avoid and be con concerned over it, but not much going on, so you can throw in a donation or two. Happy to do so. We have $50 from Dirk Mathis who says, I've never seen this Sonic game before, and seeing it at such a fast speed and handled with such ease is a real treat. Here's to an excellent run. And shout outs, oh no, shout outs to the Marvel with the screaming man inside. <laughs> that man just keeps coming back. And we have $25 from Dustin the Tall who just says, for the cause. All right, really nice. And we're coming up on the last level here, Metallic Magnet. This is a level where um, we're going to go through it regularly, but there's actually a, a level wrap you can do, but it's it's one of those level wraps where it's just really inconsistent, so we just don't do it in single segment runs. Um, but hey, it might become optimized enough to do it. Yep, probably so, and like... Uh... Well, for me, I am definitely considering it, but uh, yeah, uh, coming up here, um, for this level, there's like a, quite a few like sub-pixel areas where, um, I guess such as this right here, but maybe it's just monitor stuff going on, where um, really you'll just be stopped monitor. and you can, yeah, the trolley monitor, you'll just be stopped in a few like spots, like just completely, because that's just how Metallic 1 is. It's just a really bad level. Yeah, this is actually kind of unfortunate because he fell down to the lower route here and I'm... I mean, it, it, yeah, he got back to the top pretty nicely, but um, 
it's really somewhere where you don't want to fall. You really want to keep the speed shoes at speed there and just, you know, fly through that. But, you know, of course, when you mess up that beginning section, it's not exactly the easiest thing to just um, keep speed going. But um, right here, we're going to do what's called a quick reset, where you pause and press all three face buttons on the controller, found by Joey himself. And what that does is it resets the level, but you can't, you don't uh, see the beginning like title card or whatever. So you can actually make an earlier cycle on those platforms. And it's a really neat little trick. And as you saw, he just went over the ceiling of this level and he's going to do an MPO in this wall. And yep, yep, zip, really nice. I think subpixels could have messed him up there, but the game was very generous there. And wow, that really was good. a very clean metallic too. Yep. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, that metallic is really nice. Yeah, really yep. good. NPO into zip at the end there. That's actually pretty precise. So, you know, you got that really fast. And the last level of the game, Metallic Madness Three. Um. There's a few different routes to go, but we're just not going to go through any of them and just, you know, MPO through the middle here and zip. And touch the barrel. You can actually go past that barrel if you, uh, I think you have to go just a little bit slower, but, um, and yeah, we're basically at the, the, uh, the end of the level. And what we're going to do here is this, like, little jumping pattern that he's doing before hitting the fireflies actually manipulates the two of them to, um, go into the same spot, so you can just hit them both at once. And this yep. final fight is probably considered one of the easier out of the classic Sonic ones, because you just kind of damage boost and then jump into them. Yep. The only thing to worry about here is like, um, like when you do the, or right before you do the second hit, like, um, there's... You, you won't have, like, much rings going into this fight, like, initially, but, uh, sometimes, like, when you do get hit, uh, your rings will just fall through the flo floor, and having them is really crucial, otherwise you just have to take it pretty slow, like, with the third and fourth hits, which could make all the difference if you're on a good run, so... Yeah, it's like a couple seconds, which isn't the worst, but, you know, if you're on a good run, it could make or break, but last hit, and that's time. Yep, time. Um, really good run. Jeez. Oh. But, okay, so I was timing this run with IGT, so the primary time method is in-game time. Mm -hmm. I might have missed some semi seconds here, but what I'm looking at right now is 1158.84. My goal here was sub-12, so I just <laughs> barely got yeah. that. Oh, that's really nice, man. Good job. <laughs> yeah, really solid yeah. run for Marathon especially. Yeah. 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 Besides, like the funny enough, like like the sages I had the most concern, I nailed them. But the few sages in between there got a little scuffed here and there, especially metallic one and and unintentionally falling to the bottom route, which you don't want. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like there's some little things that you can't control mo for the most part. But overall, I'm pretty happy that it was still 11 overall. Like IGT, of course. Yep. Yep. Uh, I don't know what it is. RTA probably around like 20 minutes or something. Yeah, it's, it's, one, it's definitely one of the shorter Sonic games. Yeah, like 22-ish, but yeah, that was pretty solid overall, though. Yeah, besides, like, those, like, few levels that you mentioned that went, like, wrong by, like, more than, you know, 15-plus seconds. But yeah, very solid showcase, man. Yeah, thank you. Um, but yeah, like, uh, I mentioned <laughs> time travel, whatever, not in the block. Um, originally, this was in, a Sonic, in the Sonic block yesterday, but... I had some complications with my schedule, I got a new job, so I'm thankful for GDQ for compensating with me and putting this into a schedule that I can do my run in, so, you know, I was thinking like, okay, well, I guess I can't do the run, but, you know, they were there to support, and I'm grateful for that, and of course, thank you guys, Andre, for being calm, you know, I know it was like kind of a last minute change here, but I'm glad you guys still stuck around to the end. Yeah, that's completely fine. Yeah, fortunately for me, I was able to make it work, so, Initially, I thought I wouldn't be able to, but uh, yeah, here I am. So, yeah, I'm thankful for that. And yeah, thanks, Joey, for the raid or for the run, and then Guy for uh, <laughs> commentating along with me. Yeah, thank you guys. And um, if you like Sonic, um, sure, good amount of you do. Uh, you can follow me at twitch.tv/joybaby69. I 
I also obviously run this game, and I pretty much run the trilogy here and there. Um, but yeah, I do a lot of Sonic. If you're interested, then you know that's the place to go. But, but yeah, once again, thank you for watching, and uh, stick around for SGDQ. Hi. Hi. Hi indeed. Sonic is known for going fast, and he never fails to deliver. I have a 25 donation here from Elric who says massive thanks to the runners, commentators, and tech crew that make these events so special, and to all the people at MSF for the great work they are doing. I've been watching GDQ for years now, and I'm so glad I can be a part of it, even in a small way. Thank you so much for your donation. Well, chat, it's been a ton of fun spending time with all of you and getting the absolute honor of reading your donations for all to hear. While my time on the mic is at a close, you bet I'm going to be watching runs for the rest of this week. And together, we're all going to get to enjoy the amazing voice of our next host, the incredible Atitri. We're heading to a short break, but be sure to stick around and keep donating. Thanks, everyone. Hello, friends, constituents, and what's this say? Twitch chat viewers? I don't know what that means, but new Metro City Mayor Mike Hager here, number one at mayoring, wrestling, and delivering some justice in the streets. Uh, thank you, Mayor Hager. Uh, th this is the Tea Tree, and welcome back to Summer Games Done Quick 2021 Online, powered by Twitch. You know, I told him we were raising money for charity, not cutting a promo, but I guess some habits die hard. We have an absolutely wonderful little block coming up for you here. Uh, I have been calling it in my head the Oops All Bangers block all week so far because the next couple of runs are absolute solid gold soundtracks. We have Streets of Rage 4 coming up right next. I have my Streets of Rage 2 vinyl soundtrack in my hands right here so i can channel its energy for both myself and our runner the mighty bill uh, and if you are looking forward to streets of rage 4 and you like what you see there is actually a dlc pack coming out for this game this time next week mr x's nightmare which drops july 15th you can play as some of the villains enjoy even more music from t lopes who did uh music for sonic mania 
and try your hand at matching the Mighty Bill's skill with the new Survival and Mania Plus difficulties. Like, w w I'm not paid by .mu to say this. I don't have any affiliation with the Streets of Rage series. I just love this game, this music. Uh, Yuzo Koshiro is the composer behind Act Razor, Revenge of Shinobi, Etrian Odyssey, Sonic the Hedgehog, and the entire Streets of Rage series. He's also, as I found out yesterday, an amazing Twitter follow. Uh, it, he, somebody posted in one of our channels a performance of him doing the Act Razor Fillmore theme live. I cannot recommend any and all of that enough. Summer Games Done Quick 2021 online is only brought to you by uh, the wonderful sponsors that we have.